Is WoW Dragonflight too much content? I know we've had expansions with not enough. I mean, the obvious ones were WAD and uh, Shadowlands where content kind of dried up, but were we getting too much in Dragonflight? Is that the problem? I don't know. Let's see what, uh, what, Be what Bajira has to say. Yo, what's up, guys? Bajira here, back at it again with another gaming news Swamp video. Buff man. This time, we're talking about Dragonflight, and particularly talking about uh, an article from Game Rant, which, again, I don't necessarily fully agree with, but I do believe it brings up an interesting position that I would like to get your thoughts on and, of course, share with you as well. So, in this article from Game Rant, <laughs> that the suggestion much? is that content was lacking for a long time with World of Warcraft back yes, in Shadowlands, but yes, now with was. Dragonflight, we're seeing the complete opposite. As we saw and talked about earlier with the roadmap, we're now getting uh, new content for World of Warcraft Dragonflight every eight weeks. But yeah. that sort of brings to some people's mind the question, is that too much? Is it actually too much content? Because World of Warcraft know. has never seen this much stuff added throughout the lifetime of an expansion. Really? I feel like Legion, like e maybe even though the patches weren't coming out at this pace, I felt like we were getting a ton of content in Legion. I mean, th th those patches were coming out in rapid fire. We got Mythic Plus in one patch. That shit's crazy. But uh, uh, I... I like, I've been playing Dragonflight a lot, you know, kind of, and I feel like right now I'm, I'm ready for the next patch. I don't feel like I haven't done the content yet in this current patch. I'm like, bring 10.2 on, I'm ready. And it should be coming out in a couple of weeks. So I think the patch cadence has been good. The amount of content has been good. Um, but I guess, I guess I'll let him talk a little bit more. This, see what he it says. can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you are yeah, I'm ready for something playing new. I, I've like been bored super too. hardcore and you kind of come back and then you have a whole other like area to explore or quests to try to do and you have to kind of sort through them. It can be a bit much for some people. So we're seeing new events thrown into the Dragon Isles every few months. And even yeah. uh, with small patches in between the bigger ones, this leads to an Azeroth that the people over at Game Rant have called Littered. You would think that this consistent Litter. release of content would be great for WoW players, keeping subscribers logging in day after day. However, with a large yeah. number of things to do, currencies to collect, and systems to keep uh, up currencies. with, it's become overwhelming for certain players. If there's one thing that's guaranteed, you will get more currency types in World of Warcraft with every patch. It's like, they just love it. They can't get enough of it. They need more currencies. They love to fill up your currency tab. Uh, the, the day where currencies end is probably the day WoW ends. But, but uh, in terms of content for Dragonflight and, and players, yes, Dragonflight is not the most popular expansion in terms of like the number of players playing, and I think that's still a residual effect of Shadowlands. But Dragonflight has the highest, supposedly highest player retention of any expansion. And that's, that has something to do with content, right? What's going to retain players? Constant content updates, constantly giving you something new. And I will say what Dragonflight has also done a good job of is anytime they release anything new... The catch-up mechanics and alt-friendly mechanics have been, like, great. The best ever that we've ever seen. Like, if anybody does join in 10.2, all the catch-up stuff, the dream events and all that shit that's going on right now, the, you know, the wet dream shit that's going on. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, they're great catch-up mechanics. It's like, really quickly you can get geared and, and do shit. And so, they've been making sure players can keep up without falling behind too quickly. Fair enough. Uh, even with opening up the map, players are flooded with event notices. The chance that their quest log uh, becomes filled to the max with new stories is more likely to happen. And it, quote, feels impossible to figure out what is actually worth their time. I can sort of see that because as a PvP player, none of that stuff matters at all. You just log in, get your gear, and do yeah. arena uh, or do RBGs or whatever. Or if you're Mythic Plus, maybe some of those things matter. But I think a lot of that comes with like grinding the currency for your gear. Yeah. I think a lot of that stuff is just sort of extra or catch-up, maybe. But if you're a noob, they're out of the loop. I mean, you could feel like, am I supposed to do all this? And I can understand where uh, they're coming from with that. Yeah, but the, average... but the answer is no in Dragonflight. You're not supposed to do anything. That's one big difference between Dragonflight and Shadowlands. Shadowlands, there were lots of things you had to do, right? You had to do Torcast. You had to make your legendaries. You had to, uh, uh, f uh, for a while in, in, in 9.1, you had to get your Shards of Domination and all that shit and, and use them... You had to do a lot of things. There were a lot of things you had to do. Dragonflight is quite the opposite. It has a lot of things to do, but nothing you really have to do. I mean, you guys always joke about me and the tier quest line and, and crafting and shit. I don't want to do it, so I just don't do it. And guess what? I don't have to do it. That's the thing. Or like all these, you know, world events and dailies and all that shit. You could do them, 
but you don't have to. My renown with my with I'm still not fit, capped on renown with any of the dragon flights, but it doesn't matter. I don't have to. That's all cosmetic shit and other stuff. I don't care. Um, so again, it's given you a lot to do, but nothing you have to do. So a new player comes in, he can do whatever the hell he wants to gear out. There's plenty of ways to do it. Player, there's just not enough time in the day to interact with all this content. Although I don't know if that's necessarily even the intention for the content for you to have to. You're not supposed to do it all. But this could potentially lead uh, to some burnout early on in the game due to them being overwhelmed, perhaps. So I guess the question that this article some story is locked me, behind renown. That's some, true, but there's plenty of ways to get the renown. Like there's no one way to get renown. You can get it. There's a ton of different ways. To so do that it. you guys can answer in the comments below that's is: true. Did Blizzard go too hard on the content release? Did you get too hard, Blizzard. For me. This is actually coming from a position of someone who hasn't played a ton of Dragonflight recently. I went really hard in Season 1, but I do check in on it in Season 2 for every now and then. And yeah, they're, they're constantly releasing these new big events. But my understanding every time they have a new event come out is it's literally just intended to give you a it's way to catch shit. up on yeah, gear. It's just all catch up events. Or get mounts or get pets. So it's like ultra casual stuff. Yeah. And there's like no like requirement for you to interact with this at all. Which is a big change from some of the expansions of the past, which I actually enjoyed a lot, where it was like, yes, the daily grind that you do actually makes your character stronger. That's Whereas right. Whereas with Dragonflight, it's really kind of just for fun or to catch up or to help it you is. level alts. I think that's been like the sort of 100%. main focus of Dragonflight, as I've seen it, is this expansion is designed for there to be hardly anything to actually grind. And you can just basically level your characters, get them geared up through catch-up mechanics, and then yep. go to work doing whatever it is that you want to do in the end game, which is could be PvP. Could be plus, raiding. Rating, plus, yeah, and then of course, if if you are like a a mount collector, pet collector, you're probably in heaven. Oh, with this the is the great expansion things, for that stuff. Uh, transmog collection to get all these things from these events that are popping up. But I think from the answer that I would provide to Game Rant is like, do you have to do this stuff? No. All right. <laughs> Just level your character, get gear, and go do whatever it is that you want to do. But the fact that there are other things to interact with. If you're not somebody who just wants to push end game content, I think that's a good thing. I think it keeps the world feeling alive, it keeps it feeling vibrant. Damn. At least that's the idea. But from the perspective of a casual player who doesn't log in very often, does log in every once in a while, gets overwhelmed, that's feedback. That's important to hear. I personally enjoy it when there is daily grind to do that keeps me logging in, but me it too. does have to actually make my character more powerful or I end up not really feeling like doing it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, perspective as I appreciate, uh, I definitely appreciate character progression. Like, I want the stuff I'm doing to kind of progress my character. That's why I get so mad when I opened, like, Vault this week, and I was like, anything but a necklace or boots, and I got a necklace, of course. You know, that that makes me feel like, damn, I didn't progress this week. That, that yeah, that, that irks me. But the thing about, you know, the stuff to do in the game, yeah, no, it's fine to have lots of stuff to do in the game. I don't, I don't feel anxiety about not doing everything. In, in Shadowlands, I did, because I knew that by not doing everything, my player, my my character was becoming weaker, essentially. I was falling behind. But in Dragonflight, I never feel like I'm falling behind. I just feel like, you know, I'll do what I want. I'm not sure. I'll do, I'll do this today. And one of the PvPers I watched doesn't do PvE content whatsoever. All he does is arena. Yeah, but if you've ever watched Bajira, he does a ton of PvP. Like, that's really what he does a lot of. He's, he's known for his arena, you know, skills and everything. Uh, he does do some PvE content, but yes, you don't have to. There's That's the thing about Dragonflight. There's nothing you have to do. Just a lot that you could do if you want to. Time, and it's all about damn gains. But I do want to hear what you guys think about this topic. Is World of Warcraft putting in extra stuff? Does it make you feel like the world's more vibrant, or does it make you feel overwhelmed and not really sure what to do? That's a position that, like I said, I'm interested in hearing more about. If you guys are interested in seeing more of my gaming news videos, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe. Yeah, the notifications is great as well. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bajir is great. I haven't watched a lot of his YouTube content, but I've always I've always followed him on Twitch for a long time. I didn't know I'm not subscribed to Bajir. Yeah, subscribe. All right. Yeah. No, he's totally right. I mean, uh, you know, he said if the article I asked him is there too much going on, too much to do, he would say no. There's just a lot you can do, but nothing you have to do. That's that's for certain. So, uh, nice video from him.